was in prison. I was in prison for something I did not do. I got in a vehicle with somebody and they were giving me a lift to school. I was on my way to college, played football with Palmore Junior College. He drives to this parking lot and he says, hold on, he gets out. I'll be back in a minute. Boom, he takes off running like a shot. Uh, and I should have, at that point, I should have, I, I probably, uh, you know, I don't know, I was like, wow, this is, well, I didn't do anything wrong. I got the keys to the car. Probably should have chucked those in the bush, you know, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. These are the charges that I was charged with. Um, home invasion, burglary, robbery, auto theft, possession of stolen property, um, um, an elder victim, and, and, which is actually an enhancement, um, and torture. So while I was sitting there with uh, one of the charges, the torture charge, it was pretty serious. It was like, wow, torture, automatic life, done. Automatic life. That's their only. That's the only sentence torture carries. It's a mandatory life sentence. It was a very surreal, almost like a dream. Like this, but I didn't do this. This can't. This isn't really happening. You, know, you look at the original police report. It talks about a slender, medium. I, I've never been medium anything. Uh, not even as a child. Uh, um, build with a man with balding. All of a sudden, the story changed, and and the description fit me perfectly, you know. And I was sure once I once we went to trial and we had um, what's called the preliminary hearing, the person would look over and look at me, and he would go, "Oh, that's not him." Back then, I didn't fit it, and I still don't fit. But they actually gave a 12-year four-month sentence. And um, the thing was, is they offered me a deal, four years, but you had to plead guilty to something you didn't do. So I was like, "No way." I actually spent approximately seven years, three months, uh, nine days. I guess I have a little bit of um, a, a difficulty or with authority. <laughs> That's probably putting it mildly. And so I, wouldn't, I wasn't cooperative with them. I learned um, what it's like to be maced. Unless you can fly, <laughs> they got you. <laughs> Inside this electrified fence, so uh, they're gonna keep coming and coming and coming. I'm gonna find an escape, and so I stopped talking. I really started looking at myself and saying, okay, you know what? Especially once I stopped talking, I went, okay, you know what, it really doesn't matter what they're doing. What matters is, what did I do or not do to get myself here? Actually really introspectively looked at myself and started this journey inward. And at some point I became so, pushed everybody away, vow of silence, very little communication, occasional letter, um, very little interaction with any people. Um, basically, bring me my food and don't bother me. And and I probably got a couple um, of full feature length films. I started just kind of like fantasizing a little bit. Then I kind of looked in and said, "Well, these are kind of fantastical. Okay, well maybe they'll be films or something." And then from there, I started looking at scenarios. And then I just started imagining things. And and at some point, I kind of stay away from getting too fantastical with them and kind of stayed in things that were possible future dreams or realities. And I started thinking about like um, envisioning myself fighting. Uh, I, I couldn't say exactly what type of fight, and envisioning not just myself fighting, but all these other people fighting. And, and it, it didn't have quite the form that, that at the time, I, there's no way I could have identified it as jujitsu. About that time, based on all these things that I went through, the silence, the inward journey, I just really started really just calming and saying, okay, I got my program. I just started exercising, working out, training, thinking, um, and just spent my time, um, you know, getting close to God and, and getting close to myself. 
And then at some point, I, I suppose probably when I really noticed it was when I when I walked out of prison, all of a sudden I noticed I had gotten close to all living entities, all living things. In a focus, and everybody just treats with the highest amount of respect, and, and it's genuine. It's everybody's just so happy. The energy is so positive. Um, Don't want it. it. It really seems as though they've always been my family, and I just finally found them almost. <laughs> because during the vow of silence, you you really um, it's really keeping your guard up. It's a form of keeping your guard up completely at all times. So it's like almost like keeping everybody an arm's distance away and saying, you know, I'm, I'm ready, I'm on guard. Jiu-Jitsu is classified as a gentle art. And one of the great things about Jiu-Jitsu is um, it's really not so much violent as it is an interaction, similar to many interactions with people. It's a voluntary interaction and it goes on for as long as you want it to go on. The goal isn't to hurt the other guy. The goal is to acquire a position masterfully with control. And some people argue this point. If the guy won't tap, you can break his arm or you can just go to a different position. If he won't submit to joint locks, you don't have to hurt him. Okay, you got the arm bar, he's not gonna submit. You go a little further, Maybe you hear it pop once, can you break it? No. Ease off, reel it back in, adjust, go to the triangle. Choke him. Choke him with the triangle, put him to sleep. He doesn't have a choice, he doesn't have to tap. Okay, you don't want to tap? Then get him in a choke. And I think it's really similar to life. You've got whatever it is that you're working through, you've got to work through it. You can't panic, you can't tense up. Oh, if you tense up, Hold your breath. We well, just help in the choke. You gotta relax.